All right, how do you start your first international business? I know starting an international business can sound like an impossible task. You might think that you don't have what it takes. You might think that you are not very entrepreneurial. And you might know that 9 out of 10 startups fail. But what I have learned over the years of building my own import-export business and meeting dozens of successful entrepreneurs is that starting a business is a step-by-step -step process. Simply, I am going to break up this process into three steps. We have got step one, start it. Step two, build it. And step three, grow it. And in this video, I am going to explain each step. Let's go. If you are watching this, probably you haven't yet started your own export import business. And I suspect you might have been thinking about starting an international trade business for several years. You have just not yet taken action. And I know your excuse about this from my friends, clients, and lots of aspiring entrepreneurs. I need the right idea. I cannot get started until I have the right idea. But the thing is, and what I have learned, you don't start a business by first having the right idea and then starting a business. You start a business by deciding to start a business and then finding a process to develop the right idea. So what we need to understand from that is to begin before you are ready. No one feels ready to start a business. Just consider this. No one truly feels prepared to have a baby. The timing is never quite right. Similarly, the timing to start an international business is never quite right. You just have to take action and start. You have to begin before you are ready. And just to make this point clear a little bit more, there is a nice quote from Noah Keegan's book Million Dollar Weekend. Most of people overthinking first and act later. Every successful entrepreneur acts first and figures it out later. For example, many of my friends on YouTube ask me to create an online course about import-export. Maybe one of them is you. Yes, I can create it and make money from this course, but I don't prefer it. You can learn some from courses, but never be satisfied. Because all of us are unique and we have different needs to be successful in our own businesses. So I prefer to make videos here on YouTube that everyone easily and freely reach and get some ideas. And I find it more useful to provide online coaching and consultancy services for those who want more than this where they can experience while learning because truly you don't understand something until you have done it and finally i have to tell you stop asking yourself how until you have started whatever we think of doing something we are like well i have got this idea for this thing but how do i do it and the how question hold us back from doing things instead think what is the smallest action you can take right now even if you don't know what to do about anything. Still, there is probably a small action that you can figure out that you can just act on. And then once you have taken action on that, you can then get started with the thing. Honestly, the whole first step is a lot of inspirational support. Genuinely, I have been running my own import-export business for over 15 years. At this time, many people who knew me came to tell me they wanted to start their own import or export businesses. And most of them, when it comes to starting an import-export business, it is not technical things they are struggling with. It is the emotional side of the things. They are like, oh, I couldn't possibly do an international trade until I have a perfect international business idea. No one starts an import-export business with a perfect business idea. You decide to start and then you can figure out the idea second. Okay, after you get started, now you can think about how to build your import-export business. When it comes to building an international trade business, there are a lot of things you need to care about. But I have tried to narrow it down to six things that I think make a profitable international business that will make you feel good when you are making money. And this is the method that I would follow if I was trying to start an import-export business from scratch. All right, the first thing is to generate customer-centric business idea. When comparing successful entrepreneurs to struggling ones, the first thing I discovered is that they build business on a customer-first approach. It means you are not trying to find an idea for a business. First of all, you are starting with who are the people you would like to serve. Because fundamentally, what is the business? 
A business solves a problem for someone ready to pay for that problem to be solved. The biggest mistake most entrepreneurs make is trying to build something without first verifying that there is actually someone out there willing to pay for the thing. So when you are generating business ideas, customer come first before the product or service. To build a business, you need someone to buy from you. So if you think to have a good business idea, make sure to ask your potential customers to think first. When you are trying to build an international business, the first step is to figure out who are you going to sell to. And this is typically within your own influence zone for a beginning. For example, when I started my first import-export business, I targeted small and medium-sized manufacturers in my hometown as potential customers. And then you need to know, do they have money? It is much easier to build a business where you are targeting people who have money rather than those who don't have it. Again, in my situation as a beginner, my targeted customer had enough money. Okay, now you should start to think about what are all of the problems that they have. And it is the easiest way to find it trying to answer some questions. What are the things they need? What are the things they paid for but are not satisfied with? What are the things they are ready to pay for but cannot find it? If you do this enough, you have a list of problems for your target customers. The business world is based on entrepreneurs discovering a problem and then trying to find a solution to that problem. When I am back to my own story, I discovered that small size candy manufacturers need cheaper packaging machines. Because at that time, the packaging machines mostly came from Germany and their prices were high. So they couldn't afford to buy these machines. Then I went to them and asked if they wanted a cheaper packaging machine or not. Explained myself and told them I could find those machines from China. After a few tries, I found someone interested in my offer and I got my first customer. So my international trading journey began. The first dollars you earn are really hard. Getting the first three customers who are ready to pay you is really hard. But never give up. Let's go out and get involved in real life and be aware of the problems and shortcomings that may arise around you. Then you will try to find solutions for those. That is what successful entrepreneurs entrepreneurs do all the time. All right, after we generated a customer-centric idea for our business, now we are ready to go to the next part, and that is building your product or service. As for building a product, you may use two methods. First, you can produce your own products, and second, you can find suppliers and buy from them. But whatever you choose, first, you should define the best product for your import-export business, and then verify whether your products are good or not for your potential customers. You can ask some simple questions to define your first product to start with. Are you passionate about that product or niche? I want to help you create a business that gives fun, flexibility and the chance built wealth around it. And part of that fun is making sure that the work you are doing is actually intrinsically enjoyable for you. So if for example you decided to sell machinery parts because you thought it could make good money but you had zero pay for machines or about machinery parts. It won't be a really feel-good business. You would be doing it just for the sake of making money, which is fine, but that is not the vibe that we are going to try to go with a feel-good business. The goal is that we enjoy the business alongside the business making money. Now, this could be related to your passion or interests, like fashion, beauty products, electronics, or food stuff. It is like things like that are generally fairly easy to build a business around and learn all things easily about your product for you because we need to know all about the products we want to trade with for effective marketing and closing sales and the learning process could be boring when choose a product that we have no patience for it for me personally that things like technology renewable energy and sustainability that is why i sell solar lighting products honestly when i started the solar lighting business i had just a little knowledge about it but I spent lots of time learning every single detail about solar lights. And if I have no patience for it, I could never do this. So now I am sharing my experiences with my YouTube channel. If you like the video and think it is valuable, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friend or on your social media. It would be great support for reaching more people. If you are clear about why you need to be patient about your product, we can go to the next question. Is it the product that our potential customers 
customers need or does it solve any of the potential customers problems yes we all want to enjoy our international business game but also want to make money so you should be customer centric when choosing your product you need to care about their needs and preferences when it comes to international trade every market is unique and has it its own needs preferences and regulations for example when i decided to expand my solar lighting business to the african market first i did market research and tried to learn about their needs preferences and regulations and i realized that yes solar lighting could be a good option for them but the lights need to be easy to install easy to maintain and as cheap as possible so i reached my supplier and discussed those things in the end we decided to sell all-in-one solar lights to that market and together with my partner we developed the strfl model and this product is currently our best-selling product in the african market if you are in africa and interested in selling solar lights you can find my company website link in the description below and you can check that light or our other models out if you will give them my name they will be happy to help you you also need to follow the same method to become successful in your target market all right the last question that you need to ask for defining your first product to export or import is does your product comply with the rules and requirements of your target market here if you aim to export your product to the other market you should look for your target market standards like certificates safety regulations and others you can check government websites or ask directly to your customs agent to get that information and inform you in contrast if you are interested in importing goods to your country so you need to care about your country's standards for that product i don't want to make this video crazy long so i won't mention things like how to find right supplier or how to find customers for your import export business i made various videos about those before so i put some of the links in the description below you can watch them after finishing this one okay my friends we can go to the next part and that is to build your online presence the other day i was trying to find a new wireless mic to make my videos have more sound quality when i searched for wireless mic on google i found the brand i like deciding i wanted to look into it further i searched for that brand on google and found their social media pages website amazon store and reviews they were impossible to ignore online ultimately i ended up making a purchase my buying journey is not unique in fact according to adaptive marketing 97 percent of consumers use the internet to find products or services that is why having an online presence is crucial it helps consumers find your brand before they are aware you exist and it helps them learn about your reputation before making a purchase eventually all of these information will play a role in your customers purchasing decision an online presence can be defined by how easy it is to find a brand or company online it is important for building your brand's reputation increasing brand awareness and providing visibility to your products or services when users are searching for related keywords first things first all businesses need a quality website to build an online presence if you are thinking of selling your products abroad your website needs to be responsive to foreign customers make sure to have a contact form that makes you reachable promptly it is extremely important because most of your communications will be done online of course that involves many hours spent on laptop talking with your clients but it is all worth it in the end nowadays an international business without a proper website doesn't exist that is impossible to attract foreign customers without being online you also make your online presence stronger by creating content but remember when you are producing content it should be valuable for your potential customers overall your brand or company's goal is to make money but before you can make money you have to create value and be customer centric one way to create value is to provide educational free content online not only is this helpful for your customers but it will also improve your online presence you can open an account on different social media platforms and share your content on those platforms and you can try which ones are working for you being on social media is a necessity in this day additionally social media is a great way to build your credibility and reputation and showcase your brand when potential customers are researching your brand the first place they will look
Facebook is social media to see what you are putting out there and what people are saying about you. And this is the best way to get customers because you let them find you or your products. At the same time, when you have a powerful online presence, it gives you the freedom to start your import export business from home or anywhere you want to work from. If you want to learn more about how to build an online presence for your import export business, I can make a detailed video about it. But I want to see how much you want. If this video gets 5000 views or 200 likes in the first two weeks, I will make that video. So hit the like button and share it on your social media or with your friends. Let's go to the next part of things to do for helping to build a profitable import export business. And that is to create your package. The way your product looks can make the difference between a successful company and a struggling one. Wrap your products in attractive packages and create special offers. If you have a quality product without a good package and PR, you will never sell them. If you feel like there are no competitors, you did your market research wrong. Also, you should be aware of the packaging standards in your target market before you start to design your package. An important aspect when it comes to packaging is originality. Be different than other similar companies. And so you will be noticed by your potential customers. We are coming to the point number five and that is to ship your products. Shipping is a crucial aspect of your import-export business. It can make or break a deal. Recently, one of my customers called me and said that he wanted to buy jasmine rice from Thailand. After I found the product, I searched for how to ship products to the USA. I discovered the important thing about shipping. We need to care about the rice humidity rate. Because when the rice is arrived at its destination, the customs officer takes samples from the container randomly and tested and they compare the humidity rates with the rates you gave before. If have differences your products may not enter the USA. After that I tried to find a shipping agent who has expertise in shipping rice and the destination country. So you need to know the basics of shipping and when you are searching for a shipping agent you should care about their expertise in your products and target countries. If you want to learn more about shipping I have a book understanding the basics of international shipping. You can find my Etsy store link in the description so you can go and get it. After finishing all these five parts, now we are ready to put our business within a legal framework. The last step is to get the basics in order. Simply it means we form our company. For example, if you are in the US, you can form an LLC. For India, LLP. So you can search and decide what types of business formation are good for you. But I just suggest you try to choose options from those business formations that have limited liability. After that, you can apply for export or import licenses in your country if needed and complete all the legal works to be ready to go with your import export business legally. All right, my friends, these are the things that I care about if I have started my import export business from scratch. And let's go to the last step and you are going to learn how to grow your import export export business. When you are trying to grow your business, you can try various methods. Some will work and some will not work for you. However, never give up trying because if you cannot grow your business over time, you will lose your competitiveness in the market and ruin your business. So in this step, I will talk about some basic things you can try to do for growing your international business. Let's look at the first one and that is keeping an eye on new business opportunities. Not Keeping an eye on new import or export opportunities is always a grave mistake for beginners. It can make you lose the possibility of progress in the long run. Also, you will not be able to adjust to the market needs which are constantly changing. If you don't have time to do this yourself, make sure you delegate this task to a competent co-worker. Someone needs to pay attention to the opportunity to develop your products and business regularly. You never know when a new chance appears and how much profit you can make from it. Next, the thing number two is considering different forms of payment. Payment forms are crucial and they require a different type of attention. Don't just limit your payment options to one 
one method because this will make you lose clients. Today money can be transferred online in various ways. You can use online banking accounts or different services such as PayPal, X-Transfer or Wise to complete your transactions. Incorporate such options into your website so that your customers will find it easy to pay you. If they struggle too much with your payment method, they might just give up and start to look at other options. If you don't want that because your business will not evolve at all. Do a quick online search and check what your competitors offer to find all the payment methods that are available in your target market. Add as many of them as you can to your website and promotional materials. Especially if you are trading with foreign customers, it's a great idea to know what the popular payment method is for them. And we are coming especially the most important one. Think number three is not trying to do everything yourself. You can start your business as a one-man show, but in time you need to change it. It only overloads your schedule and become a problem at many levels. If you try to do everything yourself, you will make numerous mistakes and forget crucial aspects. When you are building a team for your international business, you need to care about all your team members' needs to feel valuable to obtain success. It also brings more motivation to the entire staff and helps you get better results for the future. Even if you might be good at working on multiple tasks, you should try to stick with one or two. Let your co-workers or business partners take care of the rest, especially the time-consuming ones. So you will have much more time to focus on yourself and more important aspects to grow and scale your business. After all, a business's success is due to the hard work of everyone involved. Having different departments for different aspects of your company is a great idea for everyone. So these are the steps that you should care about when you are starting your first international business. And it is a sort of high level approach to how to make serious money with import export business while also having fun and enjoying your life along the way. If you go to the end of this video, I would love to know what you find interesting or not interesting about it. Also, you can share your business ideas or products to export or import. I will be happy to see your ideas in the comments below. Okay, my friends, if you want to learn more ways of starting an import export business from scratch or finding overseas buyers, all that kind of stuff, check out these two videos here, which are giving you some ideas and opening new doors for you. So thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And you can support me by joining my channel or sending super thanks. I appreciate you guys for helping me to reach more people. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.